Hello and welcome to this video on the newly designed Piano Roll window in Bannon Box 2026 for Windows. The Piano Roll now features a modernized color scheme, as well as exciting new features such as a great new filter, which helps you focus on certain groups of notes for editing, more intuitive note entry and editing, better options for zooming, looping, and more. So I have the demo for this subside style loaded, which is a slow, modern, folky kind of style. And I'd like to add a synth part to this. I've used one of our new SynthMaster presets and I've loaded this totemic sound, which uses an arpeggiator to alternate the notes that are being played simultaneously. So first I'll just demonstrate adding a few notes to this song. After that, I'll get into the various tools and settings in the toolbar above. So first of all, in this area, it's very easy to see what note you're going to enter. The grid is laid out with the notes that would be white piano keys being represented by slightly lighter lines in this grid, with middle C being even lighter, and then notes that would be black piano keys being darker. In addition to that, whatever note you're currently hovering over will be lit up in blue on the keyboard on the left. And a flyby hint shows you both the note you're hovering over and the exact position. For example, you can see it says 9B, which means bar 9, which is starting a B section, beat 1, tick 1. So I'm going to click and drag to enter the note. So I can set the duration to whatever I want it to be by just releasing where I want the note to end. And I'll add some more notes. And let's check that out. And I'll add a few more. And you can just click in the timeline at the top to start playback there. And now I'd like to show another new feature, looping within the piano roll window. You can click and drag in the ruler area at the top to set loop, start, and end points. Then I can shift click on that area and the region becomes darker. That means looping is now disabled, but the region remains. So if I want to start looping again, I can shift click to toggle back and forth. So now let's check out some of the items in the toolbar. First, we have the tool menu where we can select the default tool and you can see it gives you hotkeys for selecting various tools. This allows you to select the tool that will be accessible with a left click or a right click. By default, it's the pen tool for left click and a context menu for right click. But even with these defaults, you still have other options. We saw that left clicking and dragging allows you to enter both a start and duration for notes. And you can do it in reverse too. You can click and drag to the left and then you're setting the end location of the note and it sets the start where you let go. 
And hovering over certain areas of the note also gives you other tools. Hovering over the left edge of a note allows you to change the start point without affecting the end point. Hovering over the right edge allows you to change the duration without affecting the start point. Hovering over the middle lets you either change the pitch or the position or if you hold shift while doing it you can change the pitch and position at the same time and holding control lets you change the velocity. And another new feature is that by default, the color of the notes appear more faint at lower velocities and darker at higher velocities. From the menu, we also saw that right-clicking gives you a context menu but right-clicking and dragging allows you to select a group of notes. And when a group of notes is selected, the things I demonstrated for a single note can be done to all of the notes. Change the start points, change the end points, change the position, pitch, or holding shift changes both position and pitch, and of course you can press undo to get back to a previous state. But let's look at some of the other tools you can select as default tools. Select is to select a group of notes. Again, with the default you can already do that with right click and drag as I showed you, but this would be a dedicated tool for that. Move notes can also be done with a default, as we saw, but again, you could use a dedicated tool for that. Split is a useful tool, where you can take a single note and split it in two. Erase allows you to just click on notes to remove them. This too can already be done with a main tool by simply clicking on notes and typing delete on your keyboard but this will do it in one step instead of two, which could be useful if you've got a lot of notes to delete. And then there is a dedicated tool for velocity. As we saw before, the main tool allows you to adjust velocity by holding control as well. And then all of these choices can also be assigned to right-click. Now let's check out some of the other items in the toolbar. The channel is a filter to show only notes on a certain channel. All of the notes I've entered here are on channel 1, so they show normally if I select channel 1, but appear faded as ghost notes if I select any other channel. This option also has a special function as well to show drum names if you select channel 10, since that is typically reserved for drums. If I switch to the drum track, we can see that if I select channel 10 here, the labels on the notes show the drum names. Next we have Playable Track. This is for tracks with real tracks or real drums on them to enter specific notes that you want to hear. For example, I'll go to the Guitar 1 track, which is a six-string bass being used as a low chording instrument. I'll turn on the Playable Track. I'll mute these two bars. And I'll add my own custom notes for those two bars. I'll also show you what mono mode is. I added those first four notes deliberately overlapping, but mono mode makes it easier to add monophonic notes.
but I actually do want those to overlap as well, so I'll fix that. Next is the grid. The grid can be turned on or off. The eighths are even by default, but can be set to swing. And then the grid can be set to a specific value, but the best option is to leave it at adaptive. That means if you're zoomed right in, it will automatically give you a grid with a resolution of sixteenths. But if you zoom out, it just displays the grid in a more usable way. We then have options for all new notes to be added to snap to the grid with various settings. But the default and the best option is to follow the grid, so whatever is set in that first menu gets applied for adding new notes. There are quantize options with options for time, scale, and velocity, but I'll leave the quantize at zero. And then duration allows you to set the default duration of any new note. Earlier I showed how at any time, regardless of this setting, you can enter a note of any duration just by clicking and dragging, but a single click will also enter a note with the duration set here. Next we have the filter. I'll switch to the Guitar 3 track to demonstrate this. I'll enable the filter. So there are lots of options here for filtering to focus in on just a certain group of notes. There are filters for pitch ranges, string and fret if it's a guitar or bass, position, duration of notes, MIDI channels, or velocities. So the notes on this track are on different channels based on the guitar string they're on, so I could set it to show only channels 12 and 13, and maybe also only notes that are longer than 120 ticks. So that's only these notes. All the other notes are still visible, but they're grayed out as ghost notes, which means they're not editable. That makes it very useful to narrow down a group of notes you might want to edit. For example, if I use a select note tool, it's only going to select the notes that are filtered in, and I can press delete to delete those. But I'll undo that. And another handy thing is you can invert this filter immediately by just pressing the invert button. And of course it's not just for deleting notes. You can filter a group of notes, for example, easily change the velocity of those notes. And when I remove the filter you can see it only affected the notes that were filtered. And this area down here leads us to the next item in the toolbar, Display Type. This determines what's at the bottom here. By default, it's Velocity, which is what we just edited, but can also be set to Control, Program, Channel Aftertouch, or Pitch Bend. Then we have some additional settings for what is displayed. And these are some features I already talked about, but can be turned off here if you don't want them. The crosshairs are the dotted vertical and horizontal lines emanating from the cursor. Middle C indicator is the lighter line for middle C I showed earlier. Ghost notes were the notes that still displayed when they were filtered out, so you could turn this off to just have them not display at all. Velocity shading is that louder notes are darker and quieter notes are lighter that I showed earlier. Note display is what's actually written on the notes, so there are some options there, with the default being the note name and number, but you can add or remove items here. And then you can have all of the notes named on the keyboard, or just the C notes.
And finally, auto vertical scroll just enables scrolling during playback, and mouse scroll enables scrolling with the mouse wheel, both on by default. So you can see I can move forward or backward using the mouse wheel. And if I hold shift while using the mouse wheel, I can zoom in or out. And another new feature is that you can zoom out to the entire song, which you haven't been able to do in the past. And holding control while you use the scroll wheel changes the zoom with regards to the range of notes that are visible. We hope you enjoy the new features in the piano roll window, as well as all of the other exciting new features in Bananabox 2026 for Windows. Thanks for watching and have fun.